Today we're going to do a big smackdown between two big phones. Both of these are available on AT&T. Of course, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 is available on other carriers as well, but that's where we're smacking down. Samsung Galaxy Note 2 right here, and the new kit on the block, the LG Optimus G Pro. Both 5.5-inch displays running Android Jelly Bean, full HD display here, digital pen here. We're going to look at them now. All right, it's Fablet Smackdown time. For those of you who are on AT&T Wireless anyway, we have the LG Optimus G Pro here and the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Both of these guys have huge 5.5-inch displays. That's why they are phablets across between a phone and a tablet, though. It's amazing what a little bit of difference in width can make. The LG is just a little bit narrower, just barely. And it's enough that for somebody who has a fairly large hand like I do, tall woman, large hands, this feels comfortable. When I use my Galaxy Note 2, this is my personal Galaxy Note 2 that I know and love. It's it's kind of like I'm running out of room to wrap around a little bit on it. It's a little bit harder to hold than putting them on top of each other. You can see it's just a little bit of difference. In terms of thickness, they're about the same thickness. Nothing to speak of there in terms of height. Well, they're both quite tall phones. They also both weigh around 6.1 ounces, so about equally as heavy in your pocket. They both have plastic casings. The Note 2, of course, is available in your choice of white or kind of a dark gray. A little bit of a patterning here. So in either case, you're talking about super-duper wonderful, beautiful metal quality. The Optimus does pick up fingerprints, so does the dark version of the Galaxy Note. That is what it is. And both of these have removable backs, and you have access to the battery, a micro SD card slot, and of course, your micro SIM card slot in there. So both get kudos for that. Removable battery, particularly important to a lot of people, and removable storage. They both have a single speaker on the bottom here, the Galaxy Note, that's the grill right there. And here on the LG, it's over here. And they're both about equally as loud, and neither of them are super duper loud, given how huge they are. You might think these are going to be a lot louder than some of the smaller phones that are on the market, but not so much. They have good sound, they have adequate sound, they don't have amazing sound. Both of these have volume controls on the side. This is for the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, and this is for the Optimus G Pro. So pretty well suited for right-handed people when you have your volume controls on the left side, and then you've got the power button on the opposite side. Headphone jack for both is up top. Micro USB for both of these guys is at the bottom. Now, the special thing about the Note 2, right here, it's the pen. We're going to talk about that now. So this, more than anything, sets the Note 2 apart, and that's why it's called the Note 2. It has a digital pen right here, S Pen, Wacom Technology. Watch our full video review of this to learn about that. Suffice to say that this is much more precise than your finger or a capacitive stylus. And it automatically launches some pen-aware applications right here. You can set it to not do that if you don't want it to. I find that handy. So what you get here is writing just like on a piece of paper. Nice, thin, precise looking writing. Pressure sensitivity also has palm rejection, so you can lean your hand on the big screen while you're doing it. So for those of you who are note takers, if you're artists and you want to draw on this, if you need to do diagrams, equations, all that stuff, the Note 2 is for you regardless of anything wonderful that you might see in the Optimus G Pro. That said, I think a lot of people buy the Note 2 and they don't really use the pen, they just want the biggest display they can get on an Android phone. And in that case, you'd say, well, why am I paying the extra money for this pen that's right here that I'm never going to use? Continue watching and check out the Optimus G Pro. Speaking of money, there's a $100 difference in price. The Galaxy Note 2 has been $299 on contract since it came out in December and it has not dropped in price, and that's for the 16 gig model. The Optimus G Pro is only $199, and that has 32 gigs of storage. And there's a $100 difference in retail pricing, too, if you're going to buy off contract. $549 for the Optimus G Pro, $649 for the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. When it comes to display quality, very different technologies here, and it's really going to depend on what you like. Some people are real fans of super AMOLED displays that Samsung makes and uses. They've been, say, shall we say, weaned on those. You get better than life colors, there's always super duper color saturation. And you can see the difference right here, particularly the reds do pop a lot on super AMOLED displays, so the orange hood of this BMW Z4 looks really, really zingy. The IPS display on the Optimus G Pro, though, for those who like more natural colors, wow, it is a really nice display. A little bit of a cool color cast, uh, but 
it looks really good. Uh, blacks are deep. Of course, Super Amulet, you get the deepest, inkiest of blacks in the world. Also very good on the G Pro for, for a IPS display, I have to say. It's about as nice as you're going to get, right up there with the HTC One. And when it comes to white, Super AMOLEDs have a bit more of a problem. They generally don't run as at a high brightness to save power because they use a little more power. So you're going to get whiter whites and blacker texts. For those of you who read ebooks, it's going to be in favor of the Optimus G Pro. Also, the biggest difference, you're looking at 1280 by 720 resolution on the Note 2. Uh, and that was just fine when it came out in December, but already we're seeing full HD phones. And that's exactly what the Optimus G is. You're looking at 1920 by 1080 pixels, so 400 PPI versus 264 here on the Note 2. That means things look a lot finer, a lot sharper. Now that depends on how good your eyes are. I mean, you're looking at this picture here, both of these, a very lovely picture, a nice sharp picture. Looks good on both of them, but for those who have really good eyes, you're going to notice the difference mostly and particularly on text. You'll see some staircasing. So now we have the web browser open to one of our reviews, and you can see what you got on screen here. It's about the same because it does some scaling. So right now, one thing you can see is the whites are a little bit, have a blue cast here on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. The picture has more saturation, though, here in our photo of the HTC One. You can see better color saturation, but more fine detail available on the Optimus. Again, to a certain extent, it's going to be depending on what you like better. In terms of text clarity, we're pretty zoomed out now. Let's see if I can hold both of these really big guys and get them zoomed comparably. And you can see right here that the text is a bit sharper on the Optimus and also the whites are a bit whiter. Though I would say that this is not a wildly dis bright display in the Optimus G Pro, but still, when it comes to reading, if you do a lot of that, keep it in mind, the Optimus G Pro is a good pick right there. If you mostly look at photos and play videos, I think that the color saturation for a lot of people is going to be more pleasing on the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 because it has, because it has such vivid, lively colors. For those of you who are professional graphics workers, you're probably going to prefer the Optimus Pro because it's more color accurate. In either case, you get very wide viewing angles on the phone. You can tilt and turn and still see the display other than when glare gets in the way. So they work well in that respect. Both of these have an auto brightness function that's heavy handed and makes things too dark indoors when you have it turned on. But you can adjust brightness manually, of course, thank goodness. When it comes to UI customization, there's actually a lot of similarities here. I say that LG and Samsung are after a lot of the same things, and well, sometimes Samsung thought them up first. But first off, you can see what the launcher looks like right here. Both of them are doing some translucency over whatever your desktop pattern is. We have a division between apps, widgets, and downloads using slightly different symbols here. In terms of quick shortcuts, they both give us those right here. You've got quick access to your wireless radios, the same thing going on right there, and access to all settings. So a lot of the same stuff going on. Notifications over here in groups. This happens to be weather app I installed. That's why you're seeing that there. That one didn't come with the phone. And we have a lot of the same features, including an attempt at multitasking. Two different kind of approaches to that. And again, watch our video reviews and read our reviews to see the full information on that. But with this guy right here, the Samsung Galaxy Note 2, we press and hold that, we bring up our multi-launcher and say, I want the internet browser. Tap on that, and then, so say, we've got the web browser coming up, and we want to also have gallery running. We just take it, and we drag it, and put it down here, and we'll get them running together, and you can use both at once. Now, with the Optimus, what it does instead is it has little floating applications, and there's only four here. Now, with the Galaxy, let's take the selection we have. This is really in part up to which carrier version you have. You'll see different shortcuts, but a lot of the stuff that people use all the time is here. The Internet browser, we have Facebook, we have email, we have Gmail, Samsung's chat-on software, gallery, S-Note, video player, all that stuff here. For this guy, we have Q-Slide. And we have videos, notepad, calendar, calculator. And if you want one of them floating, rather you just tap them. So there's our calculator right there. And if you want another one going, say I need notepad too. And I've got that. And you can control the translucency. You can move them around and you can resize them. Now, which is better? Uh, obviously, having a better selection of the apps of, uh, on the Samsung Galaxy S4 is a better thing. But as to which way works more usefully for you, the floating applications versus the, the half and half split screen kind of thing, well, that's up to you. In terms of call quality, both these phones are very good, both using the handset directly against your ear and using Bluetooth as well. Nice call quality. Clarity is good. 
volume is adequate and, and there's a pretty good range of from high to low for the voice quality so it sounds natural data speeds are quite good uh, the note 2 usually pulls a little bit better but we're talking really excellent results maybe 3 megabit per second different the difference between 21 and 25 megabit per second for download on LTE network 4G in the Dallas area you could call the, the, the Note 2 a last generation device already, even though it's not really six months old on the U.S. market. It has a, a very nice 1.6 gigahertz quad-core Exynos CPU with Mali 400 graphics, but the Optimus G Pro has that new CPU that we've been seeing in the HTC One, the Galaxy S4, and right here, that's the Qualcomm Snapdragon 600, also quad-core, clocked at 1.7 gigahertz with Adreno 320 graphics. Both of these are powerful phones on benchmarks. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 is faster. Now, truth be told, both of these guys are wickedly fast phones, and I don't think you're going to pick up either of them and say, oh my god, I just feel like I bought outdated hardware if I get the Note 2. That is not the case, but feeds and speeds are a big selling point for Android, really, as differentiating the phone, so I think a lot of people really hyper-focus on that. Still, if you're looking for something that's going to be the most future-proof and sound cutting edge for longer, that would be the Optimus G Pro. And when it comes to benchmarks, well, there's uh, certainly a difference. For example, on the Quadrant benchmark, the LG Optimus G Pro scored 11,994, a pretty big number right there. The Note 2 scored 6860. So, a little bit better than half uh, as good there. On on, to, on, on Tutu benchmark, 18,561 for the Optimus G Pro. The Note 2 scored 17,356. So not as far apart on On Tutu. GL benchmark 2.7, the Egypt HD 2.5 test. We got 17 frames per second on and off screen for the Galaxy Note 2 versus 29 and 28 frames per second for the Optimus G Pro, so significantly faster there. When it comes to Sun Spider, where lower numbers are better, that measures JavaScript performance in the web browser, 867 for the Optimus G Pro, and on the Note 2, we got 1052. So both are very good, but the Optimus G Pro is on paper certainly going to be the winner. In terms of which feels faster, they're actually both pretty responsive phones, especially considering how heavily skinned they are. The, the UI just spawns quickly enough, it goes home fast enough, and if we do the same things on the Galaxy, it's going to zip along just fine as well. And it's considering that it's got a lot of software running. They have a little inertia control here for the UI effect that slows things down a bit, but it goes pretty quickly either way. Now, I have found in the past that sometimes uh, TouchWiz in, doesn't get along with third-party applications as well. Sometimes there's a little conflict that results in some battery drain or performance drop. I've noticed that less so far with the latest version of Optimus UI that's on the G Pro. When it comes to wireless features, you've got the same stuff here. You have dual-band Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, GPS with GLONASS. Both have GPSs that work well. You can use them with AT&T Navigator or Google Maps. I like Google Maps. It's free. It does a great job. Both have an SD card slot, as we mentioned, micro SD card slot. Battery capacity is nearly identical, 3100 milliamps on the Galaxy Note 2, 3130 on the LG Optimus G Pro. Now with our friend, the, the Optimus G Pro, this is something we've noticed with LG phones for a while. Now, battery life is not super, super duper. It's not one of the top phones there for battery life. And so far, my Note 2, despite the, the same LTE radio, same large display right here, uh, same battery capacity pretty much. The Note 2 runs a bit longer in terms of on screen turned on time. About 45 minutes longer so far in my tests. Now we're still running tests so be sure to look at our full written review when that's available of the LG Optimus G Pro to get the final word on that. But right now it's looking like the Note 2 is going to come out ahead for battery life for screen on time. That does include standby time or when you're talking on the phone. When you're talking on the phone with the LG Optimus G Pro screen is off, boy, it can go forever. You can go for like 20 hours. It's just, it, it's freaky if you're doing things that don't require the screen to be on, playing music, calls, all that sort of thing. But for screen on time, actually using it, looking at it, web browsing, all that sort of stuff is what we're talking about for the difference in battery life. When it comes to cameras, they both have very good cameras. The LG Optimus G Pro is going to be the winner here. 13 megapixels. Now, more megapixels isn't always better, but this is a very nice camera here that captures a whole lot of detail. And I find it does a better job with low light shots particularly and also with the, the camera lens not picking up as much glare in difficult situations like you're shooting through a, maybe a glass window or 
It's a, that time of day when the sun is low. I, I tend to pick up a lot more unwanted glare on my Galaxy Note 2, but still, both of them are good cameras that can shoot 1080p video. In terms of UI, you can see the difference right here. Right now we're in intelligent auto mode, so you get fewer icons. If we turn that off, then we've got access to settings right here. There's a similar thing going on with the Samsung, including the front-to-back camera switcher. We've got flash control. You can customize what icons are on there for this guy right here, too. Sliding between your camera and video modes, you can shoot photos while capturing video, and you have quick access to the gallery. So both good cameras, but well, the 13 megapixel on the Optimus G Pro so far has really impressed me, and it's doing really nicely, particularly with low light. Maybe not as well as the HDC one, but good. So in the end, you know what I think it's going to come down to? Uh, the folks who want the best specs possible, and they're going to go for the LG Optimus G Pro for the faster, newer CPU, and for the higher megapixel camera particularly. And for people who really have a use for the pen on the Note 2, I think obviously you're going to go for the Note 2, and you know who you are if you could use that. Beyond that, it's going to be uh, LG Optimus G Pro has certainly on spec on DPI and PPI, a better display, an IPS display, but a lot of people really love that Samsung Super AMOLED display. It is bright, it is colorful, and you might look at it and say, wow, that just looks a lot more eye-popping and vivid to me. And of course, lastly, there is the fact that just a little bit narrower Optimus G Pro makes it that much easier to hold. It's really just something, how much of a difference a small change like that can make. So a little more hand-friendly. Again, neither of these phones are for people with small hands, regardless of your gender, if you have small hands you're probably going to find either of these uncomfortable. Also, for those of you who wear clothes with small pockets, well, these are real pocket busters, both of them. So that's the LG Optimus G Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Uh, they have a lot in common, honestly. It could be a hard choice, as you've seen. Hope we've helped you decide a little bit. More horsepower going on here. Digital pen going on in the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. I know a lot of you think the pen is mightier than the finger. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to read our reviews of both of these phones, watch our video reviews, and hit that like button too.